Pretty. The flowers. I'm very partial to jonquils myself. They had white ones, but uh, I thought that... Uh... Oh, you're absolutely right. That looks very nice indeed. Oh, maybe if those stems weren't all the same length, maybe if the ones down in front were just a little bit shorter. Oh. Yes. I see. I see what you mean. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Wait a minute. Oh. Here. Oh, thank you. A relative? Wife. Gee, I'm sorry. I hope it wasn't a long illness, anything painful. No. He was in a sleep. Oh. Heart condition. That's how I lost my father. I'm sorry. Well, at least they didn't suffer. That's some comfort. Oh, yes. Oh, that's going to look much better. <sighs> Wonder how long they'll last. It's too bad even flowers have to pass on, isn't it? What makes things precious is when you know they have to pass on. That's how I felt about my pop. My sisters only came to see him once a month, but I was with him all the time. You only have one father in this life, and he's not going to be with you forever. I expect you felt the same way about your wife. Yes. Of course, a wife isn't the same as, as a parent exactly. I mean, a, a man can have more than one wife without being at all disloyal. You just lost her last year. October. If you married again, nobody in this world could criticize you. They say when a widower marries again, it's a real compliment to the first wife. I've heard that. You're losing your wife and me. Losing my father gives us something to talk about, doesn't it? Yes, it's very sad. Well, oh. thank you. Ah, oh, it's nice. There's a place here for you, too. Nice? Well, I mean, when the time comes, you can rest beside her forever. For eternity. This cemetery is so crowded. Lots of people, they don't think ahead. There won't be any room for them, but your mind can be at peace. You know, there's a place here for you. Aren't you going to put some water in the flowers? I don't think there's any water around. Oh, sure. Over there on the left, down the road, there's a faucet. Didn't you see it? Right, huh? Oh, goodness, I'll show you. Well. Well, you can't leave those poor little flowers without any water. Oh, this was an accident. I fell off the roller coaster in Coney Island when I was a kid. Honest, it was in all the papers. The lake he'll find, though, it's just a little step. Your... your father, is he... is he nearby, or...? Oh, no. Pop refused to be in the ground. He's at home. I mean, his ashes are... Cremation's a terrible sin, I know, but Pop insisted on it. To be honest with you, I don't really like... It. I mean, it's kind of spooky having your own father in a... Jar that you have to dust and all right on the mantelpiece. You know what I mean? I can imagine. Oh. I tried to put him in the china closet, but my sisters and brothers had a fit. They said it didn't show the proper respect. Well, uh, why didn't the... 
Why don't they... Why didn't they keep the urn? Oh, they said Pop should, should be in his own house where he's always been. Of course, it's my house now. He left it to me. I just rattle around that big old place. It's a very well-built house. High ceilings. You know those new apartments? They may be new, but they have such low ceilings. I know. I live in one. Of course, there's something cozy about low ceilings. Here we are. Well, it looks like I walked right past it. Guess you're as unfamiliar with this cemetery as I am. I don't come as often as I should. Oh, I know how it is. You get involved with a whole new life. New friends. New family, even. That's a long trip. It's uh, two buses, one subway. You care for drinking water? Yes, thanks. This is the first time I've ever been in this cemetery. Even though I live right nearby, I just thought to myself today, it's a nice, peaceful place to take a walk. Yes, it is. It is peaceful. Oh. Well, there's a little basket over there. Nineteen twenty-six to nineteen thirty. I wonder if that's any relation to... No, it couldn't be. Still, it could be a cousin or a nephew. Did you ever hear of a comic name, Eddie Foy? I don't think so. No, you're too young. <laughs> Eddie Foy was one funny Irishman. All he had to do was open his mouth and the audience was just rolling in the aisles. Gee. I used to play hooky from school to catch his act. I thought that must be one of the greatest things in the world to make people laugh. You know, it was like, well, like. They were all blowing kisses at you. <laughs> yeah, like that. You know, one summer when I was, oh, 15, I, I got a job in the theater selling lemonade <laughs> between the acts. I not, only, I not only sold it, I made it. We used to make it in those big tin wash buckets, you know, chunks of ice. It wasn't exactly what you call sanitary. <laughs> Nobody got poisoned, though. That much I know. But I used to see his act four times a day. You know, once, boy gave me a nickel for getting his shoe shined. I never spent it. I kept it as a lucky piece. You still have it? No, I lost that a long, long time ago. Oh, uh, that's too bad. There wasn't anything magic about it. Just a nickel from Eddie Foy. Thanks a lot for showing me the water faucet. Oh, would you like a peanut? No, thanks, no. It's been so long since lunch, you must be famished. Thank you, I don't think so. Well, they're fresh roasted. What's the matter? Don't you like peanuts? Yes, I, I do, but, you know, it puts weight on. Well, you don't have to worry about that. Well, the extra weight puts a strain on the heart. But you're not fat. Besides, I don't think a man looks manly if he's all skin and bones. Okay. Thank you. You know, Rose would have a fit if she could see me eating peanuts. But you have a big frame. See, a man with a big frame, he needs a few extra pounds. That's exactly what I used to say to Rose. So you can't go by what the scale says. You have to allow for big bones. That's what I was trying to do. Just take a little walk after dinner. You'll cancel those calories right out. You no, know, I'm the kind of guy who never walks when he can stand, and never stands when he can sit. It's all right for you. You're a relative. How would you like a stranger sitting on a resting place? Oh, be a guest. Those won't mind. They're good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I practically lived on peanuts since Pop died. Mm -hmm. Oh, I miss them terribly. It's no fun cooking just for yourself. Even if you can make pastries light as a leaf. One thing Rose never had in our house was pastry. 
course, I sometimes used to sneak out at night and a couple of Danish or some donuts. Rose never knew. After all, I can't smell cake on your bread. Well, of course, I can eat whatever I want now that I'm, not that I'm alone. Oh. You haven't married again, then, huh? Rose's old friends are always trying to fix me up, but I'm discouraged. Why? I don't like the candidates. There was um, this female dentist. The first time I went out with her, she offered a cap on my, my front teeth. My? $1,500 job, free. I like that for a bribe. Then there was this widow, Brownie Krakauer. I told her to stop telephoning me. You know what she called me? You pardon the language, Miss. Oh, Omega. Mary Omega. She called me a, a little fat, hairy bastard. Excuse me. As I said before, you're not fat. By the way, my name is Belly. I wrote belly with an eye. Yes, I know. I think it's wonderful to be Italian. My sister married one. Oh, he's so full of fun and good nature and outgoing. He's crazy about the way I make spaghetti, especially with the seafood sauce. Oh, you ought to taste it. Belly only sounds Italian. I'm, I'm actually Russian. Oh, that's wonderful, too. I'm sure Russians are just like everybody else. Red cabbage soup, hot or cold, sour cream's delicious. Oh, oh, there's only one left. You take it. Ivy and Carla. Mm. Bet they're cute, aren't they? <laughs> oh, be modest. I'm sure they are. They favor their father. You know, kids just slay me. I'd trade any grown-up for any kid. Well, uh, Ivy's... Is a mother herself, you see, and uh, Carl is expecting. And... A grandfather? That's right. You? Yeah. Oh, oh sure. I'm, I'm 51. I can't, can't say that I feel it, but... Uh, 51? 51? That's nothing. That's the prime of life if you look after yourself. Of course, a man like you and he's watching over, it's not good to live alone. Well, I manage all right. Oh, a person alone at... Apt to forget meals, buttons off the shirt, house gets dusty. First thing you know, they've gone all to sea. <laughs> oh. What, what? Oh, what do you have? No. You sound just like my daughters. Always after me to move in with them. They must be very fond of you. I like my independence. I don't like to be told what to do and when to come and when to go. And Rose was uh, what you might call a, a little bossy. She liked to... I like to run things and be in charge. I firmly believe that a man should be lord and master in his own house. She had a wild imagination. She she got it into her brain that I was I was interested in my secretary. More than interested, if you follow me. Esther was Esther's been with me since I started in business uh, 22 years ago. She's a wonderful woman. And I never took her out to lunch until after Rose died. Um, your secretary, she's not married? No, she never met Mr. Wright. She must be a great help to you, having been with you so long and all. No, she's, she's devoted to her job and her hobby, bowling. Do you bowl? She's been encouraging me to take it up, but, um... <laughs> I can't, on account of my leg. But you'd be surprised how well I can dance. I don't dance too well. Oh, I bet you can. No, no. <laughs> I mean, not the kind of dancing they do today, all that, you know, wiggling and jiggling oh. around. No, I mean the old-fashioned kind, waltzes and foxtrots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, dancing is just as good exercise as bowling. And you have the added uh, advantage of listening to nice music. I do like music. You know, I have thousands of old records. Well, hundreds. Uh, Papa used to work for a record company, shellacking the records, until he retired. Do you remember Helen Morgan? Do I remember Helen Morgan? Oh, she was my goddess. I was crazy about her. She had that white face and the 
black hair. I was in love with Helen Morgan. She slays me. She just knocks me out. She was lovely. Lovely. You know, I know all her songs from listening to the records. Sometimes when I'm alone and fed up, I pretend I'm her. I pretend I'm singing in a nightclub. Now you remember that she always sat on a piano. Could you, could you do me a favor? I can, certainly. Would you listen to my imitation and, and tell me your honest opinion? You mean your imitation of Helen Morgan? Sure. She, you, you wouldn't be embarrassed. No, no, I'd love to hear it. All right. Because there's nobody around. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> you have to use your imagination. Pretend I'm sitting on a piano. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bell. It's OK. Forget it. It's all right. You're sitting on a piano. Well, I'm sitting on the piano, and, and the spotlight is shining down on me. My arms, you've been empty long enough. What good are arms when there's no man to hold? If he should pass by, I beg you unfold. For my sake, arms, reach and unfold. My eyes, you've been guarded long enough. What good are eyes? With no glance meeting mine If he should stop here I beg you to shine For my sake eyes Soften and shine Let me feel again Be alive and real again Head over heel again Let me try again Radiant and high again Or learn to cry again my heart you've been peaceful long enough what good's a heart with no reason to ache if he should roam on i want you to break for my sake heart shatter and break shatter Disgracing. Some people have no respect. I'm sorry, silly kids. I feel so ashamed. Uh, what for? That was beautiful. Oh. I mean it. No, I do. You can sing. Well, it's sweet of you to say that. Well, believe me, I was touched. I just I brought back my whole youth. <laughs> Mr. Bailey, I have a good idea. Why don't you come over to my house for dinner? And any 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 date you pick, and I'll I'll make all the food really Russian, and I'll sing to you all you want. We can play records, Helen Morgan records. Thank you, Miss O'Megan. That's something to look forward to. You're sitting on cold stone too long, you okay. could catch something. When? When could you come to dinner? When? I think I can make it very soon. I'm way behind in my work. You know what happens to us tax fellows in April. Oh, but well, you just pick. Sometime you'll be free, and, and I'll see to it that I'm free, too. I'll be working nights for a long time. I don't think I'd better commit myself right now. Better be getting back at Slate. That will give me help. Your secretary. She probably have phone messages waiting for me and all that. And, uh, she has a fit when I'm not there to close the office with her. You're the boss, aren't you? Well, Esther keeps a tight rein on me. She's a lot like Rose in that respect. She's the one who made me wear this top coat. Esther says it's not spring until she says it's spring. Mr. Belly, I don't want you to think I asked just anybody to dinner. Oh, of course not. You're really a very likable person. Maybe you won't think so because of what I'm going to do. I want to ask you a very personal question. Mr. Belly. Have you ever considered marrying again? At my 
eyes. By the way, I told you a little fit before. I'm not 51, I'm 55. And who the hell would want me? Oh, I'm sure there are many women who'd want you, Mr. Belly. Well, I was married 27 years. It's enough for one lifetime. night. All I want is my TV and some beer and play poker once a week. I don't want to be responsible for a puppy even or, or a cat. Well, it's certainly been pleasant meeting you, Miss O'Meara. Same here. May I walk you to the gate? It's a pleasure. Since my father died, my whole family's been after me to get married. Poor Mary, what's to become of her? Grown woman doesn't know how to type, takes shorthand, can't even wait on table because of her leg. <laughs> All I ever hear is, Mary, why don't you get married? Why fight that? You're a fine person, you should get married. You make some man a really wonderful wife. Sure I would, but who? Especially if you're just an ordinary person like me. No, no, not at all. You're not ordinary. Couldn't you do something with your talent, your voice? Don't poke fun. I am ordinary. But so is my friend, Annie Austin. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> Things that work out for one person don't necessarily work out for another person. Well, how do you mean? Well, she met both her husbands in a cemetery. Oh? Mr. Crookshank, and after he ran away, Mr. Austin. So you see, for her, it worked out. How did she happen to be in a cemetery? She went there on purpose. See, first she'd read the obituaries, and then she'd go to some funerals. Sort of hung around and introduced herself and sympathized. That didn't work out too well, because you see, the families were always there, watching like hawks. So then she hit on the idea of just going to the cemeteries. On a nice day, she'd come here, she'd go to Woodlawn. There's always widowers walking around thinking how much they miss home life and wishing they were married again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Even I can see the humor of it. But it does sound sensible, don't you think? Yes, I think so. That's why I came here today. Wanted to try it myself. I wish you'd tell me frankly, how does a woman find a husband when she's not young and pretty? Well... Esther's not young and pretty. I guess you two have a lot in common, huh? Yes. Yes, we do. Well, it seems like a terrific combination, the two of you. Well, guess I'll just have to keep trying. I'm not lazy by nature. You'll find someone. A livelier person than me. My, they're pretty. I'm very partial to tulips myself. Good luck, Miss Omega. Thanks for the peanuts. <laughs>